<laughs> okay, people, the road trip is over, and that's a wrap. Yes, people, Karmic Cycles in Road Trip has wrapped. And this is Road Trip Wraps. Scene one, take five, people. Yes, take five, sit back, grab your drink, and enjoy this Road Trip Wraps. Yes, this is my follow-up, people. Finally, for, uh, for my Road Trip Karmic Cycles and New Beginnings Begin, uh, thank you for being patient with me and getting this follow-up posted and uploaded. Um, you know, life gets busy, and, you know, things just don't go as exactly as we'd like, so we got to just let go and go with the flow, as we say, right? And um, I did what I could. I wanted to get this uh, to you as fast as possible, but with, uh, you know, value to it and not just shuffled out off the cuff on the fly with no preparation. Because there are points to be made, important points to be made here on this Road Trip Wraps. Yes, this is my thank you tutorial slash message if we have time at the end to throw out, throw it down on the table, a quick message from my Divine Spirit and the Oracles. But uh, mainly we're going to get through this wrap up of the road trip. My, you know, total gathering, the total, you know, what I gain from this road trip karmic cycles end series myself, and I hope you did too, and then move forward and do a couple tutorial discussions and see what we can get through in a short period of time. So please sit back, grab your drink, and join 1111 Butterfly Effect, the Divine Spirit, the Oracles, and I for this road trip wraps. Thank you, tutorial and message. Okay, so what we're going to cover first, because I think this is kind of sets the picture, okay, kind of explains what's coming up in my tutorial. And this is kind of important. It's kind of a, not that you don't know this, Okay, but maybe some of you have never looked at it this way. But it's important to have a little backstory to what we're going to talk about in regards to karmic cycles ending and new beginnings beginning. Because uh, uh, there is a process. And things can't begin unless certain things end. So it's important to go through this process as best we can so we can close the door on a cycle so that new cycle doors, the doors to new cycles, new horizons, new endeavors can be opened. So again, thank you all for joining me here for this Road Trip Wraps follow-up to my Road Trip Karmic Cycles In series. I'm so thankful and grateful that, that you joined me there on the road trip and showed your love and support for my journey and for this karmic cycles lesson for all of us, right? And also, again, you know, for joining me here, okay, for your patience and uh, all that stuff. I totally am appreciative, grateful, and thankful for all of that and all of you. So let's get to this um, main discussion, which is about karmic cycles ending, new beginnings beginning, karmic cycles versus karmic soulmates, karmic soulmates versus divine soulmates. So we're going to dis discuss a few things, hopefully, in the right order, and it makes sense for all of you. Stay tuned till the end, because at the end of this follow-up, at the end of this Road Trip Wraps post, we're going to talk about the new challenge, and that's coming up. You'll see that posted October 1st, 2020, 
The lemons versus uh, lemons or lemon aid challenge. Yes, get it right. Lemons or lemonade challenge. That's going to be at the end of this post. So stay tuned till the end for that. It's going to be an exciting announcement to announce. So let's get to this road trip wraps follow up. So again, uh, you know, the road trip was about karmic cycles. Me going to see a karmic soulmate and ending a cycle in my life that had been going on for 35 plus years. And only really until the last decade or so, 12 years, have I really known all of this. And up until the last year, have I really put the last few pieces of the initial framing and portion of the puzzle. Now I just got to fill in the holes, right? So anyway, let's try and fill in some of the holes. And uh, real quick, I think before we get to the karmic cycles discussion and karmic cycles versus karmic soulmate, we really need to know what this divine path really is. And every single human being on this planet has a divine path. Yes, every single one of us. Okay? And some of us are on a slightly different divine path than others, meaning the twin flame journey. Light workers, star seeds, indigo kids, divine souls, okay, lovers of light, those of you, us, that are on a divine path. That's what I'm talking about, okay? Uh, critical to the, you know, livelihood of humanity in the world kind of journey, right? But truly, every single person on the planet has a divine path. It is planned before you were born, okay? That's just not something written in the Bible. That's something that goes way back into ancient, ancient times. That I knew you before you were born. All this was planned before you came to planet. And for some... Some of us, we signed an extra, we signed up for some extra duties here on planet, okay? Because we were, we were, uh, some people call it the chosen ones, or we were the ones who stepped to the plate and said, hey, you know what, I'm up for that journey. I'm up for that adventure. I'm up to go to planet at that time to help save humanity. I'm up for the challenge, right? So, Lo and behold, we come to planet. And that's what we're talking about real quick right here, okay? So, if you notice, I don't know if you can see this. Hopefully you can, okay? Here we are at birth. Right over here. This location, okay? You see that location? Here we are at birth. Okay? And this, these steps, these steps are the steps to ascension, which is enlightenment, okay? This is the divine path everybody has when they're born to planet, okay? Divine path you were born with. Before you were born, there's the path, and there's the ascension, your full enlightenment, okay? Before, hopefully, you get here, before you leave planet, you don't have to come back and do it all again and repeat karmic cycles or be with karmic people right okay you follow me so far our example for example was christ this christ had a divine path okay to his ascension into heaven so the story is right okay we'll take out the religion of it all and let's just talk about a guy okay christ our messenger our example like Buddha and all the other ascended masters that came to planet to try and help guide us from birth to our ascension, right? Okay, so here's the divine path we all have when we're born. Let me try and set this down. I don't know. The lighting is just terrible here, okay? Forgive me for that. So, that's better. Here we are at birth. There's the divine path to our ascension and full enlightenment. And it's a tough path. 
because that's a long climb, right? Steep stairway, steep ascension. Some at for, at for some at some points a difficult path. You get up here, boy. Some you're out of breath, and you got to keep going to reach your ascension, to reach your enlightenment. Right? Okay. Back to birth. Here we are. We come to planet, and we're born. And here's our divine path. And what happens? Well, this happens. Let's see if I can get this get this out. Okay. So this happens. We're born, and, you know, we kind of follow the path a little bit, right? And then maybe we go way up here, off path, and then maybe way down here, off path, right? Then we kind of get back on path a little bit, right? And then, boom, we fall again. Off path, some real deep down off path, real far off path. And the further off path we go, the longer it takes us to get back on path. And if we blink or we're overzealous, we may miss it, right? And then we got to go back this way. We get too big in our heads or too big for our britches, right? So then we're back on path. And here we are. Possibly some of us, I hope you're seeing this, on our twin flame journey. Right? So, by the time we get to this twin flame journey, right, we got a lot of stuff to clear up. We got stuff over here to clear up. We got stuff... Really low energy down here to clear up. Boy, something happened here to me as a kid. You know, my teacher did something to me here. Uh, my husband did something. My wife did something here. I did, you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. I let to take over my life. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. So by the time you get to the twin flame journey, you got a lot of stuff to deal with. One, because you haven't been dealing with it as you go along your journey. And you keep getting distracted off path. And the more you get distracted, the next time you get distracted, it's even worse and harder to get back on path. Right? Probably screaming in the microphone. So I hope you turn your volume down by now. Forgive me for that lack of volume control. But I'm trying to see the board that I'm writing on. I'm probably speaking right next to the microphone. So I'll tone it down a little bit. But I hope you're getting the gist of this. Okay? Again, we all have a divine path that we came to planet with. Okay? You decided before we were born. We knew the path. There was a path laid out for us before we were born. And then we come to planet. We're born... And then we live our life, boom, ba -doom, boom, ba -doom, boom, ba -doom. unaware, really, of what's going on. Some of us that aren't on a twin flame journey, and we have our awakening, and we become woke, okay, and we learn how to cope with life and manage uh, our will and our emotions, and so on and so forth, so that we can stay on path and move forward to our ascension. And hopefully when we leave planet, we won't have made a ton of mistakes or we didn't correct the mistakes. And we have to come back again, if these are your beliefs, and repeat cycles that we didn't get right the first time, second time, third time. So that's that's one explanation of a divine path for everyone. Every one of us is a divine soul on a divine path. This is that. Some of us are on a twin flame journey. Some twin flames and soulmates, like I said, because there's sometimes a twin flame will get a soulmate. A divine soulmate, not a karmic soulmate, but a divine soulmate. One, because 
your twin flame isn't on planet yet or hasn't grown up yet. Two, your twin flame is not doing the work, does not want to follow the divine path. They want to do whatever they want and have a difficult life and wonder why it takes so long to get back into something good in their life when they're just all over the place. You know? And it's not always about us. Sometimes it's about somebody else. So I hope this is making some kind of sense for you. That, you know, again, we're all born with a divine plan. A divine path to follow. And because we're human beings and we're here to explore and adventure and have, you know, live a life. It's easy to stray off path. The key is to not stray off to stray too far off path so it takes you a long time or it drowns you so much in that overwhelming sadness, sorrow, anger, hurt, bitterness that you can never get back on path. Or you're so up in the clouds, so ego inflated that, you know, <laughs> we just won't even go there either. Because we know what happens to those who are ego inflated. inflated. They are humbled. In one form or another, those that live in the ego on a constant, they are humbled. Through loss, family, friend, job, through their own hard lessons or cross to bear through life, right? Okay, so that's my take on everybody is a divine soul. Everybody has a divine path to follow. And we are born with our own will. So we have the will to choose to follow the divine path, reach our abundance, because Creator Source wants abundance for us. Okay? Ascension. That's all abundance. Uphill, you know. Right? Can only get better, higher. Right? Okay. So, from this, I want to, you know, go into my personal road trip. And, you know, I had some issues, right? But as each one came on, came along, I hopefully, and in not all cases, but I dealt with them. You know, at birth, I had medical trauma at birth. So, that was one thing that I went through in life. But thank goodness I was a baby and I don't remember much of it. Then I moved on into life and I had some upsets. You know, I was, there was uh, sexual abuse in my family. My family and extended. There was uh, a divorce in my family. All kinds of things, you know, born and raised with alcohol in the family, uh, and so on and so forth. But I won't get into too many personal things. But I went through my life, okay? And went through my ups and downs and learned, learning my lessons and getting my blessing, blessings. But not trying not to st stray too far off path so that now that I'm here, which I've discovered down here... I'm not as overwhelmed by all the work I need to do and heal and grow spiritually and personally. Because along my path, I have had the opportunities to heal certain wounds, not all, and grow spiritually through awakenings and self-realizations and life experiences. Like I had two near-death experiences um, in my life. And those things change you. So that now that I'm here at my twin flame at the, you know, full stage, you know, full level of my twin flame journey as far as, you know, mission has began and I'm healing myself and doing my spiritual growth and personal growth and doing, you know, leading to my ascension my enlightenment, my awakening, okay? 
And here I am today uh, trying to share the knowledge that I have gained throughout my life to help others who are on a divine path leading towards their, you know, life purpose, soulmates, divine souls, or twin flame journey for you twin flame, divine feminine, divine masculines out there, okay? So, leading from this divine path and our leading into our divine journeys, our twin flame journeys, that brings me to the next points I want to make. You know, on my personal road trip journey, I took that journey because, as you know, my BFF, my karmic soulmate of 35 plus years, is, is uh, actively dying of from cancer. And it was time for me to, you know, go say goodbye. Go say goodbye to her. Go say goodbye to the karmic cycle. Go say goodbye to my karmic soulmate. So it was like a triple trifecta. Okay, for those of you horse racers out there, right? Trifecta for me. So it was a big visit, and I learned a lot from it, uh, and that's why I want to do this and share what I learned with you. So as we're on our path, we meet people, okay? And for those twin flames, you know, along your path here, you're not ready for your divine partner yet. So you meet people. You have relationships, family, friend, lover, husband, wife, right? And it's important to know who's who and what's what. Otherwise, it does become overwhelming and hard to know which direction to go and where to begin, right? So that brings me to this. Right? Which is, you know, when you're going through life, it's important to be able to decipher who's who and what's what. And right now, for those of you on your journey, if you're wondering who's who and what's what, and it, it is my... Uh, the person you're thinking of a twin flame or is it a karmic soulmate or is it a divine soulmate well hopefully this will help you decipher who's who and what's what because there is a difference you know I should cover uh, something first but I'm just gonna do a side note okay so without looking at this side here there is karmic soulmate and then you have a divine soulmate, like I told you. For those of you twin flames that are on this journey and your twin is not doing the work or hasn't grown up or is not on planet, you are gifted a divine soulmate to help you move forward in your journey. Whether it be family, friend, lover, or mate. Okay, you end up marrying this person. So it's important to be able to decipher the difference between a karmic soulmate and a divine soulmate. That's number one. I don't have a board up for that. And maybe I should have done it. But just to cover it real quickly. There is a difference between a divine soulmate and a karmic soulmate. A divine soulmate is a gift. And someone who's supposed to be in your life. As either a life partner. Or it's a family member, relative, or friend. Someone who doesn't cause you pain like a karmic soulmate would. Or doesn't cause you to feel bad about yourself like a karmic soulmate would. A divine soulmate is a plus, a positive in your life. A karmic soulmate, through discovery and opening your eyes, you realize the karmic soulmate is a person that's there to teach you lessons that hasn't always been nice to you or treated you with respect or uh, the honor that you deserve as a person, right? Even if they're your best friend or your mate, your husband, your wife, a karmic soulmate 
will is here to teach you things and will give you triggers and make you feel those feelings of lack and victimhood and you know especially if you're with a narcissist karmic soulmate and that's a whole nother tutorial too but anyway know this there is a difference between karmic soulmate and divine soulmate and i should have had a board up but i don't so i wanted to just cover that first secondly there is a difference between karmic cycles and karmic soulmates okay and I know this is going to be a lot of information in a real quick, short period of time. We're already at 25 minutes, and they haven't even gotten through my second board, so I'm going to start rolling this through this fast. There is a difference between karmic cycle and karmic soulmate, okay? And these are things that I've come to learn that Divine has helped me sort out through my own experience and other people's experiences that I've observed, Okay? To educate myself and now I'm here to pass that information wisdom and divine wisdom along karmic soulmate karmic cycle versus karmic soulmate karmic cycles first of all and foremost are a person place or thing okay it could be a cycle with a person family friend lover husband mate right it could be a karmic cycle about a place that you keep going back to. An old job, right? Education even. You know, people can be addicted to education. Like they never can learn enough, okay? So karmic cycles are about person, place, or thing. Speaking of addiction, drugs. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. You could be addicted to anything, okay? Cycles, uh, th things about planet Earth and how you treat the planet, okay? How you treat other people. Karmic cycles are about persons, places, or things. Karmic soul soulmates, it's about a person. Intimate or not, a karmic soulmate deals with just a person. Not places or things. It's just a person uh, experience. Intimate or not. Okay? Family, friend, lover, husband, wife. Boyfriend, girlfriend. So again, karmic cycles are about persons, places, or things. Karmic soulmates, that's about a person. Whether you're intimate with them or not. Number two. Second thing that I've come to find that about karmic cycles is that it's either an old cycle you're repeating from a past life even, not just this life, or it's brand new, brand new to this life. It's a brand new cycle that's been created by something you've done. Okay? Right. So, two, karmic cycles are something old from your past life, old from childhood that you've just repeated throughout this whole life, or it's a brand new thing that you've brought to fruition karmically by something you've done, said, something that somebody's done to you and said, okay? Karmic soulmates, related or not, Okay? Most of the time, karmic soulmates are for the current life. A small portion, a karmic soulmate will be someone that you repeat life cycle, lifetime after lifetime. It's more rare that a karmic soulmate is someone from lifetime after lifetime it's more so and that you could do you could do some polls yourself and do some research okay it's more so a karmic soulmate has come into your life to teach you a lesson about a cycle possibly you are doing in your life so this is really it really gets difficult here okay it really gets complicated 
Karmic cycles are about old past life stuff or new to this life that you've created or someone else has helped create in your life right now. A karmic soulmate, whether they're related or not, family or not, it's usually, it's rarely someone from lifetime to lifetime. More so, it's about your karmic cycles and a person comes into your life to teach you about karmic cycles, okay? Hope you're getting this. The third thing that I've come to discover is that karmic cycles, yes, do repeat themselves. Lifetime after lifetime, or even in one lifetime. Okay? Like, my karmic cycle, my karmic soulmate created a karmic cycle for me that for 35 years, because of this karmic soulmate relationship, I cycled through people repeating a cycle. That was brought on by this karmic soulmate. See how I'm saying it? it's really difficult. It gets really tight here. So karmic cycles repeat themselves. Lifetime after lifetime. And sometimes even throughout one lifetime. Karmic soulmates. They don't really usually repeat. Like I said, it's rare that it's lifetime after lifetime. Okay? It's rare. Past life karmic soulmates are more rare than first time here in your life to teach you some kind of lesson regarding your karmic cycles. Which brings me to point number four. Both karmic cycles and karmic soulmates bring you lessons and blessings. No doubt about it. That's the one thing they have in common. Solidly have in common. Okay? And lastly karmic cycles are for you for an individual okay whatever karmic cycles are going on in your life okay brought on by something you've done now or something you've done in a past life that you need to get it right so you can learn your lesson and gain your blessing so karmic cycles are for individuals for you karmic soulmates are for yourself or others because a karmic soulmate can come into your life not about you but about them for a lesson they need to learn. You're the lesson to them, not the other way around. So again, karmic cycles are for the individual, for you. Karmic soulmates are for yourself and or another person. It's not always about us. Jeez, jeez, jeez. I, I just, I really want to spend a lot of time on this, but I, I know I want to try and squeeze it all into a short period of time. So I hope you're getting the gist of it. And if not, I hope you play this video again to really grasp what I'm trying to share with you. That it's important to know who's who and what's what. There's a difference between a divine soulmate and a karmic soulmate. Divine soulmates are there to help you, not hurt you. Karmic soulmates can hurt you. Not necessarily just physically, but mentally and emotionally, okay? But they're all here to teach us lessons and blessings. For us, and sometimes for other people, okay? So, moving on to my next points to make here, which is about... My road trip wraps, okay? Because karmic cycles do end and new beginnings can begin, okay? And that's what we're here to talk about. <clears throat> you know, it was tough. I had to take a big, long look at what karmic cycles my karmic soulmate was teaching me. What my lessons were. And uh, because they were slammed in together, I had a karmic soulmate of 35 years te teaching me a lot of karmic cycle lessons. Like I said before, sometimes some people have to go through five people to get all that. I've been lucky enough to get a lot out of just one karmic soul soulmate. 
a lot of cycles, right? And as I said in my road trip, karmic cycles end and new beginnings can begin. If you take these steps forward to end the cycles that no longer serve you, end the relationships that are making you feel like crap. Even though you love them and they love you and they don't necessarily purposely do this to you, it's just that they're oblivious to it. They're so in their head, living in their ego, living in their karmic life rather than, you know, an enlightened divine path, right? Karmic cycles end, and this is how you can end cycles in your life, okay? And move forward to new beginnings. And this is what we're talking about for the new month of October 2020 is moving forward fearlessly. Right? In mission, moving forward towards your heart's desires, your goals, your endeavors, your dreams, your mission, your divine plan. And the rest will unfold. And if that includes, for you twin flamers, a sacred union with your twin flame, it will happen. You just have to stay focused and, you know, X marks the spot, right? Right. So how do we, how do we end these karmic cycles? Well, I took a road trip and not everybody has to take a road trip to do it, but it was time divine Timing was just right there. I was able to do it, able to rent a car, take the time to, to go do it. My friend just got out of the hospital. Lo and behold, our astrological uh, li alignment was incredible. Her sign was in the sun sign and mine was in the moon. Perfect. Divine timing couldn't have been any better. So that's what my road trip was about. And this is how I'm going to help you try and discover how you can take your own hypothetical road trip and end some cycles, these karmic cycles in your life so you can have a new beginning begin. Number one, you need to discover what your karmic cycles are and your, and your karmic relationship is. Who's who and what's what? You know, discover your karmic cycles. Is it Repeating, you know, unrequited love, relationship after relationship. It is, is it third-party love, relationship after relationship? Is it your self-sabotaging and afraid of abandonment, relationship after relationship? Discover your karmic cycles, your lessons, right? And know who your karmic soulmates are. And that could be family, friend, husband, wife, lover, Okay, foe, somebody who's not your friend, a frenemy. Discover your karmic cycles and your karmic soulmates, your soul uh, relationships. Okay, very first important thing you need to do because it'll help you in the cycle with these other steps. You don't know what your karmic cycles are via this soulmate, this karmic soulmate what's happening in that relationship, whether it's parent, child, sibling, lover, marriage, whatever it is. Discover the cycles that are going on and with whom. That's the first step to how to end karmic cycles. The second step is you need to uncover your lessons and blessings. What is it the karmic cycles are going to teach you? And are there blessings involved? And there are. My karmic blessing was that it was a release. It was spiritual and personal growth. It was knowledge gained, okay? The lessons, I learned that I am worthy. I am better than breadcrumbs. I am, you know, um, all those things, all those I am's, okay? Uncover your lessons and blessings. That's going to help you move forward to end a karmic cycle. Know your karmic cycles and who they're with. Uncover your lessons and blessings 
will happen when you discover your karmic cycles and your relationships. You'll uncover the lessons and blessings, okay? Which will lead you to address the elephant in the room, okay? Address whatever it is you've been avoiding, that that person treated you like shit, whatever it is that you aren't doing, that you're not healing or giving a surrender to, giving up that which doesn't serve you, okay? Uncover your lessons and blessings, and that'll help you discover what the elephant in the room is that you need to recognize, put in its place, let go of, and take your power back, okay? Right. Address the elephant in the room and take your power back. Which brings me to point four, you know, you got to forgive and love unconditionally, if at all possible, because that is the high vibration. Okay, if you don't forgive, no matter the results, no matter if you'll ever get a I'm sorry, you need to forgive and love unconditionally because that's going to help raise your vibration and end karmic cycles with that person, place, or thing. Right? Yes. Forgive yourself included. Okay? Brings you to point five. Reestablish new boundaries and say goodbye to the old stuff. Okay? Reestablish your new boundaries that this is what you're not going to do anymore. You're not going to let these people do this to you anymore. This is the life you're going to lead. You know, the path you're going to follow. Divine path, etc. Reestablish new boundaries for yourself. And say goodbye to the old stuff. The stuff that no longer serves you. The stuff is that keep, that's keeping you stuck. Held down to the ground. Bound to whatever it is they want. Person, place, or thing. Sex, drugs, or rock and roll. Which will allow you to, six, step six, move forward towards your fresh start and new beginnings. Because you won't have all this stuff hanging over you anymore. You will have let it go. Learned your lessons and received your blessings from this karmic cycle that's ending, right? Allowing you to move forward towards fresh start and new beginnings, which all leads to the most blessed number of all, number seven, be thankful and grateful and trust the plan, okay? When you live in great gratitude, your abundance will flow. The, the plan will unfold for you. And your divine path is well lit. I should have put the sun on there. But your divine path is well lit. That's white chalk I'm using to make sure the path is bright. Okay? Don't dull your shine or don't dull the light. Which will darken your path. Right? Be thankful and grateful. Live in great gratitude and trust the plan that your abundance is coming. That includes sacred union, your divine partner. You know, ending the cycles, the karmic cycles that you need to end and letting go of karmic soulmates that need to go so that you can move forward in your projected divine plan. The plan that was written before you were born. Right? Yeah. So, on that note, I am going through this a little fast. I hope if it, if you don't get it the first time, you do listen to it again. Because there is a lot I'm putting out there all at once. Okay? We're not going to get to the message. I'll do that in another post as a follow-up to this follow-up. I will post a message uh, reading to uh, go with this road trip wraps right exactly we're moving on forward we're moving forward fearlessly and that's what that message is going to be but until we get to that message thank you very much for joining me on this road trip wraps karmic cycles end follow-up i appreciate your patience for bearing with me until this follow-up uh, i posted this follow-up and you know, thank you all for joining me and breaking ground with me in this channel, 1111 Butterfly Effect. It's really um, important this channel moves forward in the journey to help all those out there that uh, are navigating through this, through their divine path, right? It's coming straight from divine. 
So, um, in the meantime, before I say goodbye, I just want to remind you about my lemons or lemonade challenge. Yes, there will, will be a post uh, October 1st for the lemons or lemonade lemons or lemonade challenge. Okay, see all those lemons? Yes. <clears throat> And we're excited to announce this challenge. It's going to be a 30-day challenge for the month of October. I'll talk about all the details in the post, so please stay tuned for that lemons or lemonade challenge post. It will be coming up October 1st sometime. And uh, there will be a giveaway for this challenge, which will be announced on Halloween. So a few exciting things to talk about on this lemons or lemonade challenge post coming up. So stay tuned for that and stay tuned for the message in the meantime that I'm going to include as a part B for this follow-up to see what guidance and divine spirit has to say about moving forward fearlessly. Until then, take great care and stay safe out there. Bye-bye.